And that really kind of kind of took me back. It's kind of like a, you know, Luke Skywalker going to Yoda, his Jedi master in training. And uh, Yoda asks him to do something very difficult. And uh, Luke says, well, I'll try. And, and Yoda quickly snaps up and corrects him, no, 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 no try. You either do or do not. Kind of the same idea of what Jesus is doing here. Be exacting in your faith. Be sure in your faith. It's not a yes, not a maybe, yes or no. That's kind of what's going on here a little bit. Now, here's the deal right here, guys. Is there are people in this room right now that you have a one thing issue in your life right now. You've got one thing, like this father, that you need God to do something that only God can do. And it would be called a miracle. What is it for you? Uh, some of you, your marriages are in great turmoil, and it's not the way it's supposed to be. And your one thing is that that could be completely healed. And that's your one thing. Some of you, maybe it is like a physical healing of some sort, where you need God to touch you and to heal you. And that's the one thing. And maybe it's something that you prayed about for a long time, and you're a little bit waffling in your faith in that. But you know what? Here's the deal is you need to get exact in your faith. It needs to be yes or no. And the question is, do you believe? Do you really believe? It's a little bit different. Let's look at... Uh, Verse 24 here. Jesus corrects the guy. No, it's either a yes or a no. Everything's possible for you to believe. And the guy catches it and realizes it. And he says, immediately the boy's father exclaimed. Now that word right there in the language that, that was written in, that word exclaimed means this. It means to croak. It means to, to, to shriek aloud. And it gives an example like a raven would shriek. So this man exclaimed, ah! Like a, like a raven. Do you like a raven? <laughs> okay? So the guy was corrected. He's like, okay, well, whatever. You know, he's kind of, you know, whatever. Jesus, no, yes or no. Ah, yeah! Okay? Because of all this pain, he's like, well, yes, I believe. And then he kind of goes back and goes, he goes, I do believe. And he doesn't make an exact statement, but realizes, but realizes, uh, as, you know what, I kind of do not believe. He goes, but help me overcome my unbelief. So it's like, yes, no, yes. It's kind of like the, uh, remember that movie, uh, oh, what was it, the, the Holy Grail, Monty Python. And the Holy Grail, you remember that? When the guys were crossing the bridge, and the, the guy that was the, the, the crosser for the bridge says, says, what is the secret word? And one of them goes, or, or he asks, what, what is your favorite color? And he goes, blue, you may pass. And the other guys are like, that's it, it's easy. And then the next one goes up and asks the same question. I might be getting this a little bit wrong here. But he kind of wobbles a little bit. He's like, blue, no, oh, red. No, oh, and then he flies off the deal. Okay, he kind of wobbles. He's like, oh, yeah, this is exactly what this guy is doing here. Do you believe? Yes, I believe. Oh, but help me overcome my unbelief. You see that he's not exacting in his faith. But because of the pain, there's so much passion that is there. And he's been through so much that it's like he's messed up in the head. And he's like, I don't know what I believe, but I just want my son to be, to be helped. And that's it. <coughs> and I tell you, a lot of you may be there with your prayers. It's like I tried everything. My friend who doesn't believe in God, doesn't know God. And you're like, God, I pray. Prayer request, yes, this person. And it's happened so many times. It's like, yeah, I have faith, but yeah, maybe. <laughs> And that's kind of the way it is. It's going back and forth, and you're just like, like this guy right here. But here's the deal: is you need to be exact, and you need to be passionate, and you need to rise the thing up and say, "Yeah, I do believe." Now, let me let me tell you something to kind of illustrate passion a little bit to you. Something happened yesterday <laughs> that I saw a lot of passion. Um, we had the first time ever we had a, a dodgeball team. Networks Church that played a competitive dodgeball tournament. And, and so could my dodgeball brothers please stand up right now? If you want to recognize them, so just stand to your feet. I want to tell you to stay standing. Don't sit down, okay? I want to tell you what these guys accomplished yesterday, okay? Sweet 16, blew past that, okay? Elite 8, blew past that. Final 4, Cracked the final four. These guys 
third place. Ladies and gentlemen, give him a hand. But here's passion, okay? This is a situation, Jason Webb over here, I learned is a very passionate dodgeball participant, player. And there was one moment in a very critical part of the match where you start off with six people, and of course you get hit, you're out. Everybody on our team was out except for Jason. He was the last guy to four people on the other team. And I saw some passion rise up in that guy that was incredible. I mean, he was just like, he was like, get the ball. I mean, he was, he was all over the place. And there was one, there was one play that was so cool. If all these four guys were coming down on him, they threw the ball, he caught it, and which if you catch it, one guy's out. So you got one guy out, turned around, picked up another ball, threw it on the fly, hit another guy, and he, he won that thing for our team. I mean, it was, it was amazing. I wish I could have had on the videotape I would show it to you. It was cool. But it was passion. That got me excited. I'm like, wow. That was, that was cool. And here's the thing right here. Is some of you in your faith need to be a little bit more like that right there. The passion's got to go up a little bit. It's a little bit kind of, you know, man, pan, you know, whatever. Get the passion. Be exact. Go for it. It's the best you know. Let's do this thing. That's where we need to be, okay? That's what I would call real faith. Now, here's the deal right here. There are some obstacles to get to that real type of faith that we need to. And I want to talk about three obstacles um, to getting to real faith. Uh, the first obstacle that we have to getting to that level of faith is this right here. Is sometimes we settle for some weaker things that we call faith that really are. One of those weaker things is what I would call sign demanding faith. This is the kind of faith where you say, oh God, if you would just give me a sign for this. Now we've all done this. I remember when I was a little kid, I remember one time, I don't really remember what I was asking for, but it was like, oh God. And I remember I was looking out the window of my house and said, oh God, if you would just give me a sign, I will whatever, whatever. And I kid you not, at that moment, the heavens opened up and Ray just <sighs> down. And I was like, oh, you know, I was freaking out. Because I thought, that's it. That's the sign. And I, that was funny. so funny. I don't even remember what it was I was praying for. But I do remember that moment. Here's the problem. And we've all, you all, all of you have done stuff like that. It's sometime in your life. I guarantee you. Maybe when you were really, really long. Yeah, God, if you would just give me a sign. And my faith would be there. But here's the problem with sign demanding faith, is a sign is not the real deal. Even if the sign was really simple from God, it's just a sign, it's not the real thing. Let me give you an example. You know when you're driving on the highway, and you see those blue uh, metal uh, billboards that are put up by the state, and they have the different restaurants that are in the next exit, or there's a hotel, a gas station. Okay, those are signs, right? Well, here's the problem, is we get real excited when we see the golden arches on one of those signs, but guess what? The sign is not the real deal. The french fries are not on the sign. It's in the restaurant. The sign is just a sign. That's it. Let me illustrate this a little bit more. About a year ago, there were, uh, gosh, about ten guys from this church. We were going on a train a long ways away. And we were driving, and it was getting close to dinner time, and we were all getting very, very hungry. And we had, you know, the, the phone thing going because we were in two cars. And, and somebody in the front car saw a sign for Cracker Barrel. Or, or something. I don't know how they found out about Cracker Barrel, but I think they saw something. You know, whatever exit Cracker Barrel. And they phoned back, hey, Cracker Barrel sign. And then all of a sudden, all we could talk about Cracker Barrel. Man, those pancakes are the best in the world. We're thinking, you know, chicken and dumplings. And we are all getting very excited. You know, men, when they're hungry, they get excited about what's up ahead. And we kept driving and driving and driving. It's like, where is it? Where is it? We never found the stinking Cracker Barrel. And we were angry. We were upset. So here's the problem with sign demanding faith. The sign is not the real thing. It's not the real thing. Here, here's the thing right here. Jesus is the real thing. Yeah, a sign from God, that can certainly happen. It's not beyond him to do, but that's not the real thing. The real thing is Jesus. That's the deeper issue. So that's, that's an obstacle that a lot of people have. This